So let's start. So we have to read today. One of us has to read. Um, today, Jasmine, you have the text? No, I don't have life divine. Okay, then in that case, because Archana is reading every day, so today maybe somebody else. Shilpa, you have the text with you? Yes, I have a text I can read. Okay, then read. What then is this spiritual psychic witness? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> What then is the spiritual or psychic witness or what is to it the value of the sense of God and evil? It may be maintained that the one of one use of the sense of sin and evil is that the embodied being may become aware of the nature of this world of inconscience and ignorance, awake to a knowledge of its evil and suffering and the relative nature of its good and happiness and turn away from it to that which is absolute, or else its spiritual use may be to purify the nature by the pursuit of God and the negation of evil until it is ready to perceive the supreme good and turn from the world towards God or as is Buddhistic ethical insistence. It may serve the pre to prepare the dissolution of the ignorant ego complex and the escape from personality and suffering. But also it may be that this awakening is a spiritual necessity of the evolution itself, a step towards the growth of the being out of the ignorance into the truth of the divine unity and the evolution of a divine consciousness and a divine being. For much more than the mind of our life, which can turn either to good or to evil, it is the soul personality, the psychic being, which insists on the distinction, though in a larger sense, than the mere moral difference. It is the soul in us which turns always towards truth, God and beauty, because it is by these things that it can itself grow in stature. The rest, their opposites, are a necessary part of experience but have to be grew, outgrown in the spiritual increase of the being. The fundamental psychic entity in us has the delight of life and all experience as part of the progressive manifestation of the spirit. But the very principle of its delight of life is to gather out of all contacts and happenings their secret divine sense and essence, a divine use and purpose so that by experience our mind and life may grow out of the inconscience towards the supreme consciousness, out of the divisions of the ignorance towards an interglazing consciousness and knowledge. It is there for that and it pursues from life to life its ever-increasing upward tendency and insistence. The growth of the soul is a growth of out of darkness into light out of falsehood into truth, out of suffering into its own supreme and universal ananda. The soul's perception of good and evil may not coincide with the mind's artificial standards, but it has a deeper sense, a sure discrimination of what points to the higher light and what points away from it. It is true that as the inferior light is below good and evil, so the superior spiritual light is beyond good and evil. But this is not in the sense of admitting all things with the impartial neutrality or of obeying equally the impulses of good and evil, but in the sense that a higher and low of being intervenes in which there is no longer any place of ut or utility for these values. There is a self-law of supreme truth it is above all standards. There is a supreme and universal God, inherent, intrinsic, self-existing, self-aware, self-moved and determined, infinitely plastic with the pure plasticity of the luminous consciousness of the supreme infinite. Big para, okay. <clears throat> and Shilpa, 
we have been reading God for good. Of course, it is good that God is good, <laughs> but it is good <laughs> throughout. Wherever good came, we have replaced with God. <laughs> That's a good idea, but it's not accurate. <laughs> All right. So let's go back to the beginning of the text. Or we can do one thing. I will first we will see the summary in short, and then we'll go into each sentence. Okay. So. Sometimes it's a good idea to do that. Okay. One second, yeah. What then? So Srimad is saying that there are grades. We have seen that, huh? There are grades from the in matter. There is no good and evil. Then when life comes in, good and evil starts, but it is based on sensation only, physical sensation, pleasant and unpleasant. Then it comes to the mind, which it becomes mental. I understand your thing, morality. Then it comes to the spiritual plane of consciousness, where there is some. You have to go away from the evil and go to the good. So we have seen that in the previous uh, paragraph. Now he is saying, so there is an awakening that comes beyond morality. There is a spiritual awakening. So what is that awakening due to? He has told us that it is due to self and psychic being. So now he is examining what is the psychic being. Okay, so I am reading the summary. <clears throat> what then is the spiritual soul or psychic witness, and what does good and evil mean to it? We may say that sin and evil are useful in a very uh, normal way. We may say that sin and evil are useful to the embodied soul to make it aware of the inconscient and ignorant nature of the world. Sin and falsehood and suffering. Urge man towards their opposites, virtue, truth, and bliss. So, if that is not there, then you may remain static. You may not want to progress. But when you are given a big jolt with suffering, then you want to go out of suffering. When there is a big jolt, also of a cruelty in front of you, and you can't bear to see the side of it, you want to escape from cruelty. You think of kindness, etc. So, the opposites can go you towards the Right values. <laughs> Then another use of sin and evil, it may be held, is for the soul to purify itself from sin and evil, and pursue good and virtue, and turn away from sin and evil. In another view, the Buddhistic view, they prepare the soul for the dissolution of the ignorant ego dominating the body mind life. The ego goes away entirely, and according to them, even the personality goes away, and that takes you to the Brahmic consciousness, and you are in free of sin and evil and virtue and everything, suffering, no suffering at all for you. But perhaps the best explanation of the presence of sin and evil is that these are spiritual necessities in the evolution, which rises towards God's being. Unity and consciousness. So the others are in a very general way, but these are spiritual necessities. Okay, in their absence you will remain static, but if they are there to push you towards something better, then they have their function in the physical world. Okay, apart from life and mind, there is a soul personality, the psychic being, which insists clearly on the distinction. Between the divine and the undivine, though not necessarily in a moral sense. Okay, we'll discuss that when we come to it. The psychic being does not its idea of good and bad does not tally with the morality. Okay, <laughs> so let's look at that. Morality may contradict the spiritual view of things. That's why. Okay, morality may contradict. The spiritual view of things. We'll give examples when we come to it. The psychic always tends towards the truth, the good, because it grows only by these positives. The psychic being's main character is delight of life, ananda. Okay, when you experience a um, psychic being, there is a tremendous amount of bliss and happiness. You start seeing happiness is a very weak word. Huh? You you are in absolutely 
facts because you saw the three things that happen in the psyche being when it comes forward beauty love and joy okay these three things get mixed up wherever you see you see beauty and it gives you joy but it also then when you see beauty and joy there is love okay so these are the three things characteristic of the psyche being the psychic being's main character is delight of life it makes use of all experiences positive and negative and grows by them in all contacts it finds a divine use and grows towards consciousness away from inconscious grows into knowledge away from ignorance grows into truth away from falsehood this is the nature of the psychic being the psychic conception of good and evil may not tally with the mind's valuation of things okay the psychic discrimination is automatic infallible while it is true that there is no good and evil below the mind and vital nor above the mind either this does not mean that man has to accept both good and evil impartially or even to obey them there is an interesting point and will discuss this in detail the psychic rejects the falsehood and accepts only the truth behind even seeming opposites even in seeming opposites this is summary of what he said now we can go to the each sentence and we'll see how he accurately pursuing and again he is analyzing okay so <laughs> what the purpose of good and evil sin and suffering is also graded okay so that's what he is discussing now i am reading each sentence <clears throat> what then is a spiritual or psychic witness or what is to it the value of the sense of good and evil he is asking how does the psychic being judge good and evil okay what is its valuation it may be maintained now not credibly this is simply saying it can be said he is not saying huh? it may be maintained it can be said that one use of the sense of evil and evil sin and evil is that the embodied being may become aware of the nature of this world of inconscience and ignorance most human beings are not even aware of the inconscience and ignorance of the world they just take it for granted become aware of the nature of the world awake to a knowledge of its evil and suffering and the relative nature of its good and happiness now note interestingly how he is putting in a the word relative when good is concerned okay so the nature of this world of inconscience and ignorance there is no relative huh? awake to a knowledge of its evil and suffering and the relative nature of its good even the good what you think is not absolute good there are graded goods <laughs> and happiness and turn away from it to that which is absolute this is the function of the psychic being it takes you away from the lower values of evil and suffering and takes you to the higher and in that there is also the uh, the a uh, good that plays a part and that good may not be good spiritually okay a sensational good is one thing and a moral good is another thing and the spiritual good is again a third thing they are all different good is common to all of them in the beginning it is physical physical sensation secondly it is mental sensation then finally it becomes spiritual good or else another idea it may be maintained he is continuing in the same way or else it, its spiritual use may be to purify the nature by the pursuit of good and the negation of evil this is a moral idea okay until it is ready to perceive the supreme good and turn away turn from the world towards god or third possibility or as in the buddhist ethical insistence it may serve to replace the dissolution of the 
ignorant ego complex and escape from personality and suffering not the words carefully ego complex why is he using the word complex and why not ego because the ego is there in the vital and the mind also and it is also there to a certain extent in the body okay so it's a complex the ego is there and what is that is a sense of separation okay the sense of separation that also will come up and we'll see that and the escape from personality and suffering why is he not saying only escape from suffering why is he saying personality because personality is body mind and life okay person is the psychic being all the self but personality in each life you are given a different personality and that is your body life and mind okay so there also you will escape because we are constantly identifying our body mind life with our real personality but it is not okay? you have to escape from that but also it may be that this awakening is a spiritual necessity now we come to the the ultimate okay the first physical sensation then the vital sensation then finally the mental idea of morality and then you come to the spiritual so <clears throat> but it may also also it may be that this awakening is a spiritual necessity of the evolution itself a step towards the growth of the being out of the ignorance into the truth of the divine unity and the evolution of a divine consciousness and a divine being so what is the divine consciousness and divine being why are you repeating divine consciousness is a chit your consciousness but also a divine being <coughs> you can interpret the word being here in different ways you can also say is a divine body or you can also say divine way of living being you can interpret as way of living okay you you must put on the nature of the divine that's it the <clears throat> so this is the function of the psychic being to take you away from that which is lower and take you to the higher for much more than the mind or life which can turn either to good or to evil know that interestingly the mind and life can go to both okay the vital can certainly go to evil but it can also go to good the vital gives you cruelty but it also gives you kindness is the vital that does that okay you can be very generous also okay you will see many people who are very very vital their extreme opposites are there in them they can be very cruel but they can also be tremendously generous okay so this there are many cases we have seen in the ashram more like that okay much more than the mind or life which can turn either to good or to evil okay even the mind can turn to evil it is a soul personality okay? this psychic being which insists on the distinction now he is saying something interesting he is saying soul personality okay because the soul can influence your body mind life also the psychic being when it comes forward it it is there it leaves its trace everywhere in the body in the vital as well as in the mind the psychic being which insists on the distinction though in a larger sense than the mere moral difference okay in a much larger sense because for the psychic being that which is evil may turn out to be temporarily your good okay and that which is your moral good may not be spiritually good at all okay so we have to distinguish that <coughs> so <coughs> a very easy for instance i'll tell you somebody is turning to a guru who they think is a good guru okay there are so many gurus in the physical world but this psychic being may recognize that this human guru is not a good one at all so it's a good thing to go to a guru but the psychic will say no don't go to him so the good of others he may not be the good of the psychic being okay so it's very simple <laughs> or you take up even a, a certain suppose you are very much work oriented okay and working is good but your destiny may be for 
not so much for the good, but it may be for something else. Okay, so what is good for others may not be good for you. So that is what is pointing out. <clears throat> for much more than the mind or life, which can turn either to good or to evil, it is a soul personality, psychic being, which insists on the distinction, though in a larger sense than the mere moral difference. It is a soul in us. See now he is using the word soul. In a very general sense, there is a difference between soul and psychic being. But the soul can be the undeveloped psychic being also. Okay, so and the developed soul is a psychic being. It is the soul in us which turns always towards truth, good, and beauty. All he has kept capitals. Huh? That means not mental truth. Not mental good, not mental, but absolute truth, absolute good, and absolute beauty. Because it is by these things that it itself grows in stature. So, the rest, their opposites, are a necessary part of the experience, but have to be outgrown in the spiritual increase of the being. So it's like a you are building a house, okay, and you use scaffolding. It's a help. But after the house is built, you throw the scaffolding away. So sin and virtue are also scaffoldings. They help you to build a good structure. Your psyche being will use sin and virtue to go away from them. They have to be outgrown. Okay, that's what I'm saying. <clears throat> the fundamental psychic entity in us has the delight of life and all experience. As part of the progressive manifestation of the spirit, so the progressive manifestation of the spirit, evolution. Okay, he is giving you instead of saying evolution, he is saying progressive manifestation of the spirit. He is giving you a lot of information. What is meant by evolution? Slowly, the divine is manifesting in you. Okay? More and more, you are going away. The human part is falling away, and the divine part is growing in you. That is evolution. <laughs> Spiritual evolution, but the very principle of his delight of life is to gather out of all contacts and happenings, even that which is unpleasant, even that which seems to be evil. Okay, out of all contacts and happenings, the secret divine sense and essence, a divine use and purpose, so that by experience our mind and life may grow. Out of the inconscience towards the supreme consciousness, out of the divisions of the ignorance towards an integralizing consciousness and knowledge. So we'll have a careful look at it because there's one thing there. So we're using the word divisions of the ignorance. So what are the divisions of the ignorance? Okay. So when you are an ignorant, your ego is absolutely coming to the front, na? No? And what is the ego? It makes you feel separate from everybody else. So that's why when they use the word divisions, you are divided from everything else when you are ignorant. But when you are not ignorant and you go to the higher level of consciousness, you feel yourself to be one with everybody. There is no division there at all. Then, okay. So <clears throat> that's why they use the word divisions of the ignorance towards an integralizing consciousness and knowledge. Integralizing. Harmonizing everything and becoming one with everything. It is there for that. What is there for that? The ignorance is there for that. The ignorance, sin, and suffering are there to make you go towards the integration, integralizing consciousness, getting rid of divisions and coming to unity, feeling one with everybody. It is there for that, and it pursues. From life to life, oh, sorry, it is there means psychic being. Sorry, it is there for that, for this. The psychic being is there in you, and it pursues from life to life its ever increasing upward tendency and insistence. It grows, it goes on growing. The psychic being goes on growing. Okay, its ever increasing upward tendency and insistence. The growth of the soul. Is a growth out of darkness into light, out of falsehood into truth, out of suffering into its own supreme and universal ananda. Okay. 
the soul's perception of good and evil may not coincide with the mind's artificial standards. Now that's an interesting one. That's exactly what we have to see. That which is good for the ordinary man may not be good at all for <coughs> the psyche being growth. Okay, I'll give you a good example. Okay, there is a person who got a job offer and a very good job offer. So it is something very good for that person. But the soul may say that this is not. This is this will land you in trouble, and also it will make you very outward oriented. So don't take this job. Okay. So that which is good for the normal man may not be good at all for the psychic being, because the psychic being sees ahead and guides you and says, "Don't do that." Okay. The soul's perception of good and evil may not coincide with the mind's artificial standards, but It has a deeper sense, a sheer discrimination of what points to the higher light and what points away from it. Also, I'll tell you. Sometimes I gave you this example last time, but now we can apply it here also. The soul's perception. You become very friendly with somebody. It may be uh, the same gender, or it may be the opposite gender. You become very friendly with them. Okay, and you. Think it's a very nice relationship, but the soul may not. The soul may realize that this is not a very good um, friendship at all. In fact, mother used to do the work of the psyche being for others. Okay, when the if you are not fully aware of the psyche, you cannot be guided. So mother used to guide. There are many cases where mother said, "This person is not for you." Okay, so not to mix with them. And other cases. She said, "Yes, this relationship is going to be helpful to you." Okay. Well, many of these examples that I can give you, they have all passed away, so there is no point in giving them. But there were sometimes she encouraged the relationship, and sometimes she did not. <laughs> so that's the good of the soul and good of the body mind, like the outer nature. The soul's perception of good and evil may not coincide with the mind's artificial standards, but it has a deeper sense, a sheer discrimination of what points to the higher light and what points away from it. It is true that as the inferior light is below good and evil, a superior spiritual light is beyond good and evil. Now, what is that? Which is the inferior light? He has told us very clearly that in matter, okay, is below good and evil. There is no good and evil in matter. That is inferior light, and the superior light in the spiritual plane of consciousness. There is also no good and no evil. So there, what he means by inferior light and superior light, he has told us already, na? Okay. Beyond good and evil, but. This is not in the sense of admitting all things with an impartial neutrality, or obeying equally the good impulses of good and evil. So he is giving you a warning. Just because in matter there is no good and evil, and just as in spiritual life there is no good and evil, that does not mean to say that you will start going doing evil merrily, okay, happily. It doesn't mean that at all. That's what he's pointing out. <coughs> But this is not in the sense of admitting all things with an impartial neutrality and obeying equally the impulses of good and evil. But in the sense that a higher law of being intervenes, in which there is no longer any place or utility for being there. So, I'll give you an interesting example. I think I've given earlier, but I'll tell you. You are supposed to develop samatha, and for samatha. There is no good and evil. You are absolutely not affected by them. This is samatha. So um, it is again doshi. When again doshi wrote this one, now I have understood what is samatha. I am very calm and quiet, and I, whatever comes to me, I accept happily. Okay. So Sindhu says certainly not. <laughs> you have to use your discrimination. 
it's not only samata but also discrimination okay somebody gives you a bottle of whiskey and very happily you accept it <laughs> that is not there is no discrimination there so samata does not necessarily mean it should be void of discrimination that's what you meaning by the sentence okay so so <clears throat> It is true that the inferior like that favorite. Right? So, I mean, there is no any place in it. So, uh, I'll read that sentence again. That phrase rather. But this is not in the sense of admitting all things with an impartial neutrality, or of obeying equally the impulses of good and evil. <coughs> but in the sense that a higher law of being intervenes. In which there is no place, no longer any place or utility for these values. Okay, sin and virtue don't bother you anymore, so they have lost their the value of wanting to push you up because you already pushed up. Okay, so there is a self law of supreme truth which is above all standards. Again, he has used standards, the four standards. Okay, so <coughs> they. Individual standard, the social standard, the moral standard, and the social standard. So, the supreme good is above all these values. There is a self-law of supreme good, which is above all standards. There is a supreme and universal good, inherent, intrinsic, self-existent, self-aware, self-moved, and determined. Infinitely plastic, with the pure plasticity of the luminous consciousness of the supreme infinite. Now, this good that is inherent and intrinsic, he is saying it is infinitely plastic. So, your idea of mental good and mental evil may not tally at all. Okay, so it can it is very plastic. Okay, a mental good can turn out to be a Spiritual evil, and as mental evil may temporarily help you to go beyond it, and it can become a good for the for the soul. So, I remember, okay, there is a very interesting image that is given. A spiritual man is traveling on the road, okay, and he comes to a crossing, and there are four crossings. Four ways. One he has come, and there are three more. Roads which he has to take. Sometimes one road is completely blocked. You don't go that way. Okay. <clears throat> the other one is open. Okay. And that open road may also include a few things which are so-called evil. Okay. It can happen. It can be used usefully. Then the other road is semi. Okay. It sometimes allows you to go, and sometimes does not allow you to go. Okay, so this is the choice which comes to the spiritual soul, the spiritual the psyche being. Some things which are considered evil in the past are allowed to continue because it it has its effect will be good on you. So this is what Sunday is saying here. There is an absolute good, and there is also a relative good. So there is self law of supreme good. Which is above all standards. There is a supreme and universal good, inherent, intrinsic, self-existent, self-aware, self-moved, and determined. You don't need the mind for it. This inherent good is self-moved. It will tell you itself the right and wrong. Infinitely plastic, with the pure plasticity of the luminous consciousness of the supreme, infinite. Why it is plastic? Because what may be good for you. Spiritually, may not be good at all for somebody else. Okay, I remember uh, somebody writing to mother that I don't want to mix much with people. I want to remain isolated in my own room as far as possible. So, in one case, it is allowed because he had too much of the uh, mixing type of, of character. He's mixed too much with people, so it's good to isolate yourself for some time. But in another case, if there is an ascetic tendency of not mixing with anybody, then you are encouraged to mix with others. Okay, so that's why it is infinitely plastic. 
Okay. That completes the para. So, and then if then we read the next one, and we have four minutes again. So, if you go into detail, I see that each para, long para, takes up almost the whole period. If then even and for sure and natural products, we can read that. Okay. So, Kiran, you have got the text with you. Yes, yes. Okay, can you read? Yes, yes. yes. Okay, go ahead. We we'll read the para and discuss it next week. If then evil and falsehood are natural products of the inconscious, automatic results of the evolution of life and mind, mind from it in the process processes of the ignorance, we have to see how they arise, on what they depend for their existence. And what is the remedy or escape? In the surface emergence of mental and vital consciousness from the inconscience is to be found the process by which these phenomena come into being. Here there are two determining factors and it is these that are the efficient cause of this simultaneous emergence of falsehood and evil. First, there is an underlying a still occult consciousness and power of inherent knowledge. And there is also an overlying layer of what might be called indeterminate or else ill-formed stuff of vital and physical consciousness. Through this obscure difficult medium, the emerging mentality has to force its way and has to impose itself on it by a constructed and no longer an inherent knowledge because this stuff is still full of nuisance, heavily burdened and enveloped with the inconscience of matter. Next, the emergence takes place in a separated form of life, which has to affirm itself against a principle of inanimate material inertia and a constant pull of that material inertia towards integration and a relapse into the original inanimate inconscience. This separated life form has also to affirm itself, supported only by a limited principle of association against an outside world, which is, if not hostile to its existence, yet full of dangers and on which it has to impose itself, conquer life, room, arrive at expression and propagation if it wishes to survive. The result of an emergence of consciousness in these conditions is the growth of a self-affirming vital and physical individual, a construction of nature of life and matter with a concealed psychic or spiritual true individual behind it, for which nature is creating this outward means of expression. As mentality increases, this vital and material individual takes the more developed form of a constantly self-affirming mental vital and physical ego. Our surface consciousness and type of existence, our natural being has developed its present character under the compulsion of these two initial and basic facts of the evolutionary emergence. Yeah. Okay, so we have uh, got only one minute left. With this, we will do next time. We will go into detail. Okay. So we can also first do the summary and then we will look at the sentence. So this para we will redo. So he has to note down that yes, six thirty three. Yes. Like yeah, we have to redo this. If then evil and falsehood are natural products. Okay. Yes. All right. So. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.